put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Before I start this one, I am breaking format slightly and Basically, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start with a thorough review, but only talking about the positives. And afterwards, I'm going to elaborate on pretty much everything I say in the first portion of the review. And nothing I say in either of them will discount the other, but... Some people are really mainly looking for reviews of this where they they hear all the cool stuff you can do. And I completely understand that. And that's why I'm doing this. And I do still do the, the negative one because I am just... Yeah, I'm... I'm when I do a review, I try to cover everything, even, you know, every negative, every positive, even stuff I absolutely hate to say about it, I try to say in the review. So, without further ado, Mirror's Edge video game review. In a dictatorial, unnamed city, you are a runner, one of many, basically... Every every bit of communication is traced and recorded in this society. So those who don't want what they're sending to be, you know, yeah, to fall in the hands of the government, have to use runners who basically use let's let's go with paper letters, you know, by hand, and the. You know, one day, you you play Faith Connors, and one day, her sister, who's a police officer, Kate, is impressively framed. The murder was done with her gun, she was right there, and she doesn't remember anything. So that's, that's, yeah, <laughs> A for effort. And you have to clear her name. Now... As, as a runner, you, of course, have to avoid the cops, and basically that means traveling by rooftop, you know, either running or using parkour, yeah, I'm gonna go with that, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, you, you know, use zip lines, balance across beams, it's, it's very immersive, and the themes here are, of course, how much, you know, how much governmental control and how much security versus how much freedom. And, yeah, unusual for a first-person perspective game, this encourages you to find out-of-the-box solutions. It's very much arcade parkour, and some have likened it to a racing game, which, yeah, that's, that's appropriate. It plays somewhat like a first-person perspective Tomb Raider or Prince of Persia, and to some extent, an Assassin's Creed, although those are a bit more, you know, those have a sandbox, and this, this doesn't. Now, you navigate across this gleaming city, jumping from one roof to another, wall running, you access buildings via air vents, the game goes to great lengths to make you feel the strain and physical contact with the environment and it enables a greater freedom for you know first person perspective games greater freedom of movement now the game has you building and maintaining momentum 
which means that you, basically you do this by not stopping and not slowing down. So, yeah, you know, if you have to run around something, but don't slow down, and yeah. The controls are contextual, meaning that up can mean jump, vault, or climb, and, you know, climb to the top of something that you're holding on to, and down can mean slide if you're moving and you press, you know, or roll if, you, if you're landing from a jump, and crouch. Now, you have this thing called runner vision, which highlights in red objects that you can use to travel, you know, boxes stacked on top of each other and the like. And gaining and maintaining momentum is somewhat like a rhythm. Now, at, at its best, this is highly this is exhilarating. And this does nicely in spacing out free running and jumping across roofs, so that feels more earned and satisfying. You know, in the trailers, you see a lot of jumping across rooftops. If you were doing that all the time, it would get old. Now, and you do spend more time in elevators, narrow hallways, and vents. Now, this features realistic melee from a first-person perspective, so you can see your limbs as you're kicking and punching. Others have already suggested, recommended, to play this not as a first-person shooter, but as a puzzle game. You can get guns, basically you have to disarm an enemy, and as soon as that gun is empty, you just have to get rid of it and guns slow you down, the bigger they are, the more they'll slow you down, so you kind of have to make the decision of, you know, agility versus temporary firepower. And the, you know, the minimal, playing this with, minim with minimal gunplay, it plays a lot like a survival game, it's very tense like that. Now, in addition to the story, this has a time attack mode, where you try to get the best time on a short map, and there are online leaderboards. There are 23 time attack levels, and you get them either by progressing in the campaign or doing well on other time attack maps. Now, the game has three different difficulty settings, and even on the easiest, it's challenging. There are a lot of hard, hard won and satisfying victories. Now, this has a tutorial. You can replay levels by checkpoints, and yeah, that's that's always, always a good thing to have. And the the levels are quite varied for you know a Prince of Persia style game that isn't in a fantastical setting. You know, in a Prince of Persia game, you'll have you know ruins, caves, and this one this is set purely in this one city. So you know you might worry that it would get samey, but it really doesn't. You know there are levels of corporate buildings. There's a storm drain. There are alleys and streets. There are train tunnels where the trains are running. That is just, yeah, and, and literally, you know, you can be standing and a train will pass on either side of you and then, yeah, as soon as the train's passed, you have to run through the tunnel where the train just was and there are going to be more trains. So, yeah, that's, yeah, some, some very memorable levels. Now, this is visually distinct. There's a lot of white and apparently they removed all greens and this in part enables you to focus on the runner vision and helps them basically completely eliminate the HUD. The only thing that even approaches that is a reticle in the middle of the screen just to give you something to focus on but you know the when, when you lose health in this the colors become less saturated so yeah again very, very immersive and colors and light also reflects very nicely. Now this is very a lot like
bicycle delivery men with you know the the runners in this game and it really captures that kind of adrenaline and unpredictability you know the rush this has a Tokyo Japan kind of look and architecture and some people are not going to like these comparisons but to to an extent it has a similar look to the Eon Flux film and to Ultraviolet and yeah not 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 good movies by any stretch of the imagination but they do have some fascinating you know gripping visuals and yeah this has some of that and it also plays like a game of the first matrix you know you're always running on foot from point A to point B you avoid or fight cops yeah it's and and that is an experience that I haven't seen any other game capture so that's really cool even even the you know, matrix game didn't completely capture that yeah I it's, yeah there's a lot that game did not do well now the you do there is no customizing in this game so you are focusing on doing well instead of you know you're not running around looking for stuff. The, there's one uh, item type that you can pick up but yeah that's it and that adds just some repl replayability like that but really yeah you can run through this and not think about anything you have to pick up like that the few colors really fit with this oppressed totalitarian system you know very black and white and very shiny on the surface and I'm afraid that covers the positive review so discount TMNT I know what you're thinking is it really worse than a license? Yeah, it's worse than a license game. It, although that is one of the few good, in fact, one of the best licensed games, but still. Granted, there is no shooting in that game. Even with a low ammo weapon, and even if it slows you down where you know you might otherwise try to rush. Sure, granted. If if you'd prefer those and you can do without the parkour. Discount Oni. Now, that does of course also come with the caveat that both of those games are third-person perspective games. And that's because first-person perspective for this kind of thing can get really awkward and that happens a lot in this game. I know, th th the developers are asking, you know, could I overlook these flaws? No dice. So, so the the plot. I already mentioned that you're trying to, you know, clear Kate's name after she is framed. This is, of course, after Faith nearly walks off without helping her sister, even though she risked a lot by even going to try to help her. So, yeah, the plot and characters are really bland and do not draw you in at all. And the ending of this, I mean, the the climax is pretty meh, but. The ending, the game does not so much end as it, as it stops, so, you know, if, if you're getting into the story, yeah, try, try to dial that down, because it's not going to really get resolved by the end of this. Now, there is, you know, the gameplay here is very trial and error, so you're ba basically trying out different paths until you find one that works. You're not going around trying to actually solve the you know yeah you're just you're you're constantly running around trying to figure out where you know you're supposed to go next and how to get there it's frustrating and tedious to try over and over and it saves at least a little bit too rarely it's similar to you know older games where you know you learn by dying or failing and it gets especially heinous for the third of the full playtime of this where you're being chased by cops and SWAT you know while you're trying to find your way so it stops being thrilling that they're you know gunning for you and becomes just white noise I, I have to be honest there were points of this where I was so infuriated the only reason that I actually 
completed this game was so that I, you know, I, I, I was determined, really stubborn like a mule, to review it. Yes, I know. Although in this case, it's more like, yeah, the it it can be fun to guess where to go, but the gameplay is not really complex enough for a full game, and and to an extent, this does help that in being, you know, short. It, it sort of tries to pull a portal and just be so short that it, you know, portal actually gets away with it. This took me six hours total to complete, and about a third of that time was me trying to find the right path or redoing something that I already done because I died briefly after. So, you know, not new or effective parkour. And yeah, it, it, there, there are times where this feels really long, and it just seems like, will will it ever end? But yeah, the yeah, not not just not complex enough to support a full game. I mean, I've only played the the demo of Rayman Legends, but there's this bit where you're jumping and attacking and the like to the to this hard rock beat. And it is a ton of fun, and it is also only a single level. Not a full game, because this kind of thing just... Yeah, it's it's hard to try to make this kind of fairly narrow concept work for an entire game. There's basically no replayability here. It almost looks better than it plays. I... I you know, if, if this at all interests you, but you think it might be too frustrating to play, watch, like, Let's Plays. That's, excuse me, that, that'll, yeah. Now, after a while, you just get tired of the same movements, and I, I will say, I mean, I thought it might get tiring to constantly be on the run, but the short length does, you know, make up for that. It it doesn't really, yeah. Now the I I mentioned that it you know it's comparable to a racing game in in some parts. Sadly though, without co-op or multiplayer, which would really have helped a lot with you know making having you playing the game for a longer period of time. I, I should say, I don't really see myself playing this again, at least not anytime soon. Now, with with vertical pipes and the like, you're, you're looking at your hands a lot. It has already been pointed out by other reviewers, this, this was not sufficiently playtested. Now, I mentioned the runner vision. There are not enough visual. There, there, yeah, there are not enough of the runner vision hints. Even early on, even on the easiest difficulty setting, you're you're getting lost really early on. Now with the rhythm, you have to wonder why this was not a Wii game because this. I mean, I played a game very much like this in you know Wii Fitness, and. Yeah, and, and I think I did record a video where I talked about why not a, a longer game of that, so I, I don't think the timelines quite match up, but if somebody saw that video and that that video brought Mirror's Edge into being, I am deeply sorry for that. Now, too often momentum is lost and the game just grinds to a halt. This is especially when you're shimmying or crawling in vents. When you go into an elevator, a lot of these elevators, first you have to press the elevator call button, then you have to go into to the elevator, press the elevator button, and all this time just, yeah, you know, seconds on end, I don't know, maybe half or a full minute where you're doing nothing, where you're just waiting. And, I mean, why not do that thing where, like, you have to run to even make it to the elevator and, like, the doors are closing, but, and, you know, you just barely make it in 
and then you know the, the doors close and like right after that to to keep you from then having to wait I don't know maybe it you know breaks down immediately after and they start prying open the door and you have to jump up out of the you know may, maybe it starts falling and you you know and the doors slowly open you have to jump out what I'm saying is they did not have to slow you down in this game and it's just yeah it's it's really bad when it does now yeah the, the when you aren't there's a lot of problems here where you you can't see your feet and you can't see your hands when you're just moving so you won't know exactly when to jump or if you can grab on something and the like and that makes you die a lot without yeah when when that really didn't have to be necessary I don't really see why they couldn't have some kind of visual cue just just a subtle one the way they show the you know the health you know maybe when you reach the very edge like the the split second that you spend between moving up to the the very edge and going off the very edge if that had just this tiny little you know quick fade or something that just told you now you're on the, because you can tell you you can feel with your feet okay this is this is the very edge you know even if if you're not looking and you know yeah this uh, something similar could be done with the hands you know yeah now yeah for for the elevator i mean it's not like the game slows you down for opening doors you you bash through doors you know you a lot of, if if you don't have to be crawling for an extended period of time if there's just like a, a hole in that that you can pass through in like a fence then you slide through that you know without losing momentum so yeah and it's not like this kind of thing hasn't been done before or been done well I mean, I joked about Ubisoft's TMNT game, but but yeah, that really doesn't you know slow you down or force you to wait much at all, and it's much more varied in part because of you know you're you're also fighting off you know ninjas and the like, and it avoids being frustrating because you can usually tell where to go, so you're focusing on just getting the timing exactly right, and it has replayability. And you know, it's fun to replay because you're trying to beat your best time. You're trying to do even better in the fights. You know, the, when you're doing best in the fights, you're never hit, and you're constantly, you know, either moving towards the next person you're trying to hit or hitting someone. You know, that is is how you do this sort of thing. And it, it also has these practice levels that are very different from the campaign levels. Frankly, when this game is not exhilarating, it is annoying, boring, frustrating. It's really awkward when you miss something. If if you really thought that jump was going to be able to make it, or yeah, the that sort of thing. And there are a number of glitches where the character just will not grab a ledge or the like, even though you timed it right, you pressed the button. Now, the I already mentioned, you know, you can't see your hands or your feet. This is again, you know, Prince of Persia does this far better because of a third-person perspective. You can, in in this, it's especially when you're trying to wall run or employ the 180-degree turn. Yeah, so often you'll hit at just the wrong angle trying to wall run or you'll hit the 180 a little bit too late or too early and again to to you it looks like well I'm still wall running aren't I I'm, I'm hanging here aren't I and then suddenly afterwards you realize oh wait no because I guess it ended there and yeah which again I mean yeah if if they had just had some sort of neat little visual cue like the the stuff they do for the health and yeah for when you're coming up on the you know yeah now I suppose that covers 
yeah, basically, there's a reason why first-person perspective games tend to be littered, limited, and littered with ladders and basic jumping puzzles. This is one of the only ones that tries to go beyond that, and when you go beyond something that's already been done, sometimes there is, there's a really good reason why it hadn't been done before. Timing for disarming and fighting is awkward. It feels like you have to be a little too close and wait for a little bit too long. Like, you'll run up to someone and think, well, I can disarm them, right? Because they, you know, I've, I'll do it real quick. Nope. They'll just, you know, block you and hit you and, yeah. And this is, you know, not the tight, close melee of Assassin's Creed where, you know, you, you can be right up against the enemy and attack, dodge, disarm, and the like. In this, it's, you know, if, if you try that sort of thing here, the moment that you're done hitting them, you know, you can do a, a combo of a couple of hits. The moment that ends, they hit you, and you'll either have to, you know, run a little bit back or just, you know, or go in for a new attack. It's just, yeah, it, it just, again it's not smooth which is really what the tr the game is trying to be all the time and whenever it doesn't it just sticks out like a sore thumb this has fighting more like Oni where basically you have a number of fighting game moves and you have to engage those from a distance you know you run from a few feet away and then you do you know your your flying kick you know it's it's not this thing of being right up and close and you know, the moment that he hits, you disarm, and, yeah. Now, the gunplay is bad, but the game is pretty hard to do without it. I mean, basically, you'll be running circles around the enemies, you know, trying to lure them to, to split up, getting them to move, you know, up against a wall or around a corner and such. It's a lot like one of those boss battles where you're just running around waiting while he attacks and eventually he'll, you know, give an opening. And I'm not exactly a fan of those kinds of boss battles, but okay, fine. But here is every single battle. And again, it's about a third of the time that you're being chased. And a number of those times, you do actually have to fight them. You can't just be running from them. Now, this is a nitpick, but... The guy guiding you via the radio, he never stops talking. And it's not like, you know, he's just giving directions or something. No, he is snarking at you even when you're making progress. You know, bringing up Enter the Matrix again. In that one, the guy is funny, likable, and he doesn't nag at you as if you're scolding a child. Now, the, the difficulty gets pretty uneven. That was about. Now the the game has way too much of you going. You know, wait, why did I just die there? And yeah, and in part it's because the developers made it look really open when in reality it's linear. There's if if you think you can jump down onto something or climb up on something. Yeah, just be aware that you might well be doing something that developers didn't mean for you to do, and you'll you'll die even though it makes no sense. And then there are of course these large square boxes that, no matter how how high up you are, if you land on those, you're good. I mean, there's fabric on top of it, so yeah. I mean, even if it's like a you know, trampoline or something, yeah, it's still, you know, and the rest of the game does seem to more or less abide by the laws of physics, so, yeah. Now, there was a bunch of times where I found myself running in circles, excuse me, running in circles trying to figure out where to go next and, you know, maintaining momentum and just, you know, because it was easier than constantly stopping and, you know, gradually moving around the area. Uh, there are times where, if, well, when you die, an area that was swarmed by cops, you know, they all vanish, and it, it gets seriously eerie. And, and that's also when you start to realize that if you see someone in this game, 
they're a cop, an ally, someone you're chasing, or otherwise someone plot really. Basically, this city is apparently empty of citizens. And again, you're moving around during the day. You're you're moving through corporate buildings, and just these. Yeah, I mean, other than these these trains that are running, you know, I mean, say what you will about the, these leaders, they make the trains run on time. That's really the only indication you have that there is life beyond these, you know, aforementioned narrow character groups. Now, the controls are simultaneously too streamlined and not streamlined enough. Too streamlined in that you're basically just finding the path to go in so that it'll look good as you're doing it. It's, it's like Assassin's Creed 3. It's, it's like... <sighs> You know, it, you're basically watching a movie, and it's more than quick time events, but still, there's there's just not that much freedom. And the moment you hit a button at the wrong time, it just looks really awkward. And at the same time, they're not, you know, they're not streamlined enough in that you can't always see when you're supposed to press a key. Now, I mentioned in the shorter and positive view that this has a tutorial. It's one of those, thankfully it's skippable, but it is one of those terrible, it's thankfully pretty short, but it's restrictive, unforgiving, and it does not tell you what you did wrong. You know, it's this kind of t tutorial that teaches, it trains you how to pass the test, but it does not teach you how to play the game. You know, there's it, it constantly starts and stops, killing the momentum, and retrying doesn't put you very far back. You know, why doesn't it just let you follow, you know, a trainer ongoing while they're moving, you know, for the rest of the game? You're supposed to be constantly on the move. And they let you do this in one of the first missions anyway, so they clearly knew how to do it. The, the tutorial does not, the, the game does not give you what would help for training, which is an area that you can just practice in at your own pace. Now, it's, yeah, with, with this kind of tutorial, it's only after the tutorial has ended that you start learning. This is a nitpick, but when, when it comes up with like a prompt and such, you have to either press enter or use the mouse to point to it where otherwise you were just using it to move the first person camera. The first person camera. It, it really breaks the flow and I don't know why some developers choose to keep that kind of thing off the space key for example which they do use here for skipping movies. Like in Assassin's Creed you can't always tell what move a button is gonna do or why what you did didn't work and the keys do not all respond immediately when you press them, unlike Prince of Persia. I often lucked into progress and then died shortly after and had to, you know, then figure out how I got to that area. And there are a number of points in this where you, you're you supposed to double jump, but it looks like you have to separ separate the jumps out and vice versa. Again, you know, you can't tell what your hands or feet are touching. If you're not standing still or if, if you're not still, you can't be absolutely sure what your hands or feet are touching or what they will touch in a second. And because of that, you might have just, you know, stopped short the exact right point, but you might keep moving forward because you're still thinking, well, I'm jumping and I'm jumping forward, so I have to keep moving and then you fall off instead of again medieval if you if you're not running in medieval if you go right up to the edge of somewhere you might fall down he will stop and kind of do a motion you know if you want to go off that edge you either have to run off it or jump or run and jump but he, he stops short. I don't know why this game couldn't have at least something like that. Maybe just a key that you have to press in that situation. But again, too often it goes wrong because you couldn't tell that you had already, you know, grabbed on or you were going to grab on a second later or something along those lines. 
Now, the animated cutscenes are... They really clash with the look for the rest of the game, and frankly, I don't see why they aren't all in first-person perspective anyway. I'm sure you'd lose or at least dramatically change some of these animated cutscenes, but it'd be a lot smoother like that, and it's not like games haven't been done with that, you know, Half-Life fear. Yeah, I mean, when, when you... They, they do the, the first-person perspective ones when you're, you know, first moving into a level or sometimes during a level. And if it didn't have that quick white fade of a transition to tell you that you can now control Faith, you might not know that that's when you can control Faith because they're so seamless. Now, the... Where Assassin's Creed has free running in an open world, this is closer to Prince of Persia, where you basically have to find out what you can interact with. Now, there's a, a lot of this where you're thinking, you know, you try to interact with something and you think, oh, it must be the wrong way because it didn't quite work. And you try a bunch of other things and eventually you found out, find out that was the right way. It just, you know, for for some reason, maybe a glitch or something, it looked like it wasn't. It looked like you couldn't do that, but yeah. Now, some have found this to be too bright, which I can definitely understand. I, yeah, and, and this is definitely not a game that you will want to be playing if you might find it too bright. Now... Some have said of this that, you know, it's okay that it's not done, that it could be more refined, and I'm all for experimentation and trying new things. It, you know, it's, it's, the, it's vital to grow the medium of video games, but when you release a game, it should be done, and if you can't quite get it to proper releasing form, then, you know, put out a beta, release a demo or something. But yeah, don't don't put out something that genuinely isn't done, especially not if you're asking for any kind of money for it. And I suppose that covers everything. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.